video, I'll be talking about the Fibonacci sequence. So, the Fibonacci sequence is a pretty unique sequence. It starts off with 0 and 1. And then the next term is always going to be the sum of the previous two terms. For example, the next term is going to be 0 plus 1, which is 1. The next term is going to be 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2. And then the next ones are going to be 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. And in this video, we'll be talking about the Fibonacci sequence, its properties, the proof for its properties, and much more. However, before you watch any further, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any of my videos. And if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this link to your friends. So, let's take a look at the Fibonacci sequence. It's a very unique sequence because the rules for the sequence is different than other ones. Many other sequences are either arithmetic sequence or geometrical sequence, and Fibonacci sequence is a very unique one. It's none of them. So, let's try to put the rule of Fibonacci sequence into an algebraic calculation. For example, we know that any term in the sequence, let's say f for Fibonacci subscript m as the nth term, and then f of m is going to be equal to the sum of the previous two terms, which is going to be f of n minus 1 m f of n minus 2. And if you're not really familiar with this notation using subscripts and all that, you might want to refresh about this because it's a very important notation to master. So this is basically the general rule of the Fibonacci sequence. But I'm going to show you a very interesting property. So if we take any term in the Fibonacci sequence, let's say f of n, and then we divide it by its previous term, f of n minus 1, this is going to approximate the golden ratio, which is approximately 1.61803. I'm going to sink that in right now, because just think about it. This Fibonacci sequence is going to approximate the golden ratio for all of its terms. If we take the 50th term, divided by the 49th term, it's going to be equal to the millionth term, divided by its previous term. It's always going to be approximating the golden ratio. And before you try out some values, just be reminded that this is going to approximate it. It's not going to be equal to it. It's only going to be equal when we use the infinitive term. But when we take the first term, and then the second term, third term, and so on, eventually we will reach a point where it's going to approximate it very, very well. For example, if we take the first term, the second term, sorry, 1, and if we take 1, divided by 0, well, we don't get any value. This is unfined, because we can't divide anything by 0. But if you take the second term, 1, 1 divided by 1, that's equal to 1. Well, it does resemble the first digit of the golden ratio, but it doesn't really approximate it. So let's try to use different values. For example, 2. 2 divided by 1, that is 2. Well, technically speaking, 2 is more close towards the golden ratio than 1. So I'd say we're going on the right track. What about picking 3? 3 divided by 2. Well, this is equal to 1.5, pretty close to the golden ratio. It almost resembles its second digit. So if we try it out on values larger and larger, eventually we're going to approximate the golden ratio really well. And many of you might be wondering right now, why is this true? Why is it like this? Well, I'm going to prove to you about this important property, but I'm going to do that in a minute. Firstly, I'm going to write another property of the Fibonacci sequence, which is that if we take any of the terms divided by the previous one, the second one in here, we know it's going to be the golden ratio, and we know it applies for all values in the sequence, be it the 50th sequence, be it a Google type sequence. It's going to follow this rule. So we can say that this value is going to be consistent 
is going to be equal for any value we choose. We can write it as, let's say, another term. Let's say the previous term before f of n. Let's say f of n minus 1. Divide by its previous term, f of n minus 2. It's going to be equal. We can say it's equal to f of n plus 100 over f of n plus 99. Remember, we have to use the previous term in the denominator. And we can continue on to write this value, but this is this just taking you to a good sense of the properties of the Fibonacci sequence. So we've gone through many of that really quickly, but these three properties are very interesting. And I know there are quite some other properties that it has, but I'm going to discuss about that later on. Firstly, let us prove this, because this, in my opinion, is the most elegant property of all. So let's take a ratio of the Fibonacci sequence. Let's say a random value in it, f of m. We're going to divide it by the previous term, f of m minus 1. We know it's going to be equal to itself, of course. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's equal to f of m over f of m minus 1, out of pure logics. Well, we know, we've, and we've discussed it before, that f of m any number, any value in the sequence, is going to be the sum of its previous two terms. So it's equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. We've discussed this before. So then, let's take this value and substitute it to this one. So we're going to get that it's going to be equal to, well, f of n is f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. So we can say f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2, divide by f of n minus 1. And then we can take out this fraction into two parts. So we can say that f of m over f of n minus 1, still this value, is going to be equal to the first part, f of n minus 1 divided by f of n minus 1, don't forget plus, by the second value, which is f of n minus 2 divided by f of n minus 1. This is just a simple properties of fractions. f of n minus 1. So, firstly, we can take out this value because we know it has got to be 1 because any number divided by itself is equal to 1. So then we can say f of n divide by f of n minus 1 is equal to 1 plus by f of n minus 2 divide by f of n minus 1. Well, we said it before. We can take any value in the Fibonacci sequence. Going to cut this off. So we can take, for example, f of m divided by f of n minus 1. This is going to be equal to the golden ratio. And it's true for any value in the sequence. So we can say that this is equal to another value in the sequence. Let's say f of n minus 1 divided by its previous term, f of n minus 2. So we're going to use this to further manipulate and substitute in this equation. For example, f of n minus 1, that's the same thing in here. f of n minus 2, that's the same thing in here. So we can use this to substitute into here. So firstly, we can already write f of n divided by f of n minus 1 into here, because they're the exact same. However, there's one difference. In this one, f of n minus 2 is in the top, while in this one, it's at the bottom. Same thing here. This is the bottom, but this one is the top. So basically, we're taking the reciprocals of these values. Reciprocal is when we switch the numerator and the denominator. So we can say this is equal to f of m divide by f of n minus 1 is equal to 1 plus by this value, but we switch the numerator and the denominator. So basically, f of n minus 1 at the top, divide by f of n. So let's say we set up a variable. Let's say x is going to be f of n over f of n minus 1, this value. So we can write it out. This is basically x is equal to 1 plus this value. Well, we can see 
that this value is the exact same as this one f of n, f of n, f of n minus 1, n minus 1 but in here, the numerator, this one is f of n, but this one is f of n minus 1 and here, it's switch, f of n minus 1, f of n so basically, we're also looking at the reciprocals so what's the reciprocal of x? that's going to be 1 over x and now, we have a simple equation with one variable and at this point, some of you may have recognized this to be the direct equation to figure out the Golden Ratio but let's just solve it real quick so firstly, let's just solve it by multiplying by x so we multiply it by x and then we're going to multiply it by x in here so that x times x, that's x squared is equal to 1 times x, that's x plus by 1 over x times x the x cancels out, we get 1 and then this becomes a simple quadratic equation we can just put all the values at the left so we get x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0 and at this point we can already use many different methods to figure this out we can use either the quadratic equation or we can complete the square and just for simplicity's sake let me use the quadratic formula which is that x, the variable we're searching, is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a so then, we can already figure out the values for a, b, and c a is going to be the coefficient in the first term what is the coefficient in x squared? it's going to be 1 what about b? b is going to be the coefficient of the second term of negative x well it's going to be negative 1 times x so it's going to be b is negative 1 and c is the same thing it's the coefficient in the third term and because the third term is a constant we can just say it's negative 1 so then we can use the formula that x is going to be negative b b is negative 1 multiplied by negative gives you 1 plus or minus square root of b squared b is negative 1 multiplied by itself we get positive 1 minus by 4ac a is 1 c is negative 1 multiplied together we get negative 1 multiplied by negative 4 we get positive 4 so 1 plus 4 then we're going to divide all that by 2a 2 times 1 is 2 so then we can say that x is going to be 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 or x can be 1 minus by the square root of 5 over 2 and because we're going to look at the positive values for this problem because if we take the ratio between the Fibonacci sequence all of them are going to be positive we're going to take out this value and this is going to be our answer the answer is x is going to be 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 and if you evaluate it on a calculator the value is going to be approximately 1.61803 so on this is the golden ratio so what we've proven is that the Fibonacci sequence is indeed going to figure out the value for the Fibonacci sequence or the goal ratio of 5, 1.618 and so on and at this point, this begs a question well, is the Fibonacci sequence the only sequence that has this value? well, actually, any sequence as long as the next terms are the sum of the previous one this is going to abide this law so, let's just try several different sequences so, let's take a random large number. Let's say four digits number. Let's say we take eight, three, five, seven. And then let's say the second number is, let's say, nine, four, eight, five. That's going to be the first value in our sequence and the second value in our sequence. So for the third value, we're going to use the formula for the Fibonacci sequence which is the next term of the sequence is the sum of the previous two terms because we have proven that if we use this rule in our sequence we're going to get this value 5 
or equal ratio. So let's just calculate the value real quick. I'm going and let's say we stop in here. So we can continue on the sequence, but let's just stop in the fourth and fifth term. So according to our calculations, as long as this sequence uses the rule for Fibonacci sequence, which is the next term is the sum of the previous two terms, if we take the ratio between these two, we're going to get the goal ratio. So let's try that out. Let's say 2, 7, 3, 2, 7. And then that's going to be the denominator. The numerator is going to be the next term. 4, 5, 1, 6, 9. So let's type it onto our calculator. That's going to be approximately 1.6529. I'd say it's pretty similar to the goal ratio. So we have tried to use the algebraic expressions to prove that every sequence, as long as the next term is the previous two terms combined, is going to approximate the goal ratio. And indeed, it is true. We have tried to use a random number for the first and second value for sequence, and the result is it is still the golden ratio. This is just an approximation though. If you want to make a more accurate one, we can go on to like a millionth term or a billionth term using computer programs. But that's pretty good to prove my point. So in this video, I talked about the properties of the Fibonacci sequence, the definition of its sequence, and also the proof for its properties. And there are much more properties about the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence to discuss and several different sequence like this. For example, the Luca sequence is also very fascinating. However, for this video, I think that this is already enough. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video to your friends. And if you do love math, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.